What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Low Fidelity Dreams podcast. I am Armand, your host. We are today talking about a few random things, mainly about me, just so we can get things started, some of my goals, things that I want to accomplish as far as the near future, distant future, distant ether, all the same. So, a little bit about me. A lot of you guys probably have already listened to some of my music. If not, definitely go check it out. I go under the alias Ex Machina. So it's really from the machine in Latin, but spelled a little different. Um, so it's E-X-M-A-X-H-I-N-A. You know, how to be a little bit original there. Uh, there's a few other dudes out there with the same alias. But, uh, you know, we had to change it up a bit. But now we are here, a year later, we've got tons of tracks out, we're going to talk about the processes and everything that went into creating this new sound that I call Dark Lo-Fi Glitch, and a few other little knickknacks, and um, there's really no script on any of this, but yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's get to it. So what is Dark Lo-Fi Glitch? Well, let me tell you. So it's actually... Uh, when I first started producing music, now let's just kind of go back in time here. I started producing it in 2013, really started to get into the whole electronic dance music scene um, around that time. Now, before, my musical influence is pretty interesting. I've listened to a ton of metal music. I mean, I grew up on listening to metal music pretty much every day. I would go work out, listen to it every day vibe every day pump to some crazy metal every day <laughs> and that was just my influence now before that my parents would listen to bollywood music all the time so some of you if you don't know that's indian music i am bengali so it is close enough but my parents would listen to a ton of bollywood music and the biggest thing or the biggest takeaway from that kind of music was the melodies the vocals it just really stuck with me you know, and then going into my teen years, listening to metal music with heavy melodics and crazy breakdowns, that's where the the grunge side of me started coming out. Now, the reason why I bring up all of this is because people don't realize, or artists don't realize at least, that a lot of the music that we make today, or even now, has some sort of relation with our past musical influences. I enjoyed a lot of metal music, and I still do. I don't listen to Bollywood music as much anymore, but I mean, I listen to it religiously. And so it stuck with me quite a bit. But now, creating a fresh style of music, which I call Dark Lo-Fi Glitch, it is a genre that I, yes, I made up. Um, I mean, granted, there have been variations of it, um, you know, of this same genre. I've had people hit me up like, yo... You know, you should change the name of the genre or whatever because it doesn't match or fit. Well, the craziest thing is music is what you make it. And no one can tell you otherwise. And if there is no term dark lo-fi glitch, I'm going to make it. And that's exactly what I'm doing. You know, just recently we had Bandcamp's tags updated and dark lo-fi glitch is now one of those tags, which is pretty neat. So that was a fun milestone there. Um, you know, and all I did really was flood the market saturating the market with your work is very important i mean think about it this way if somebody were to walk up to you and ask you yo like what do you do and you tell them that you are a artist or a musician nine times out of ten they would expect you to have some sort of work that's available for them to see or view listen to or whatever um but if you don't that's where the biggest problem is right i think in this current version of society everyone's trying to do everything but they don't want to put in the work for it and that includes putting the time in to create the music and to actually upload it for people to feel something about it it's not about making the bangers it's literally not it took me almost a decade to realize that and after producing for so long and just recently starting this whole new wave of dark lo-fi glitch or this new fresh sound or whatever 
I realized that it is so much more important to just get your stuff out there so people can just see it or listen to it. Just saying saying that you're going to do something and then never putting the work in for it, it doesn't make sense. And so what I did was I was like, okay, well, I'll, I'll just go ahead and flood the market because nobody's making this style of music. No one's really claimed this genre. So I'm going to make it something. I'm going to make it into something. And yeah, I mean, it's it's been it's been pretty cool. There have been my ups and downs, obviously. But in reality, the one thing that I'd always tell myself is if I don't have 52 tracks out, I have zero reason to complain. And so this is one of the things that I learned actually from my musical upbringing. One of the artists that I looked up to, his name was Zoo. And I don't know where I read it, but I think it was like a blog post. It was kind of cool. It explained how he got to where he was. And if anyone's listening, you can always correct me if I'm wrong. But he had this thing, what he called 52 to Zoo. And it was creating 52 tracks, so one a week, until you find your sound. And so that stuck with me for a long time. And that was my initial goal when I started this whole project of Ex Machina and the Dark Lo-Fi Glitch stuff. I didn't actually go into it thinking that I was going to create a, a different genre. It was more or less me just wanting to create a flavor of music that I can enjoy for myself whenever I wanted. And that realization honestly allowed me to do the 52 tracks, put in that work without worrying about what people thought. The biggest thing that holds a lot of artists back is, you know, they're just people pleasers. Everyone wants to please everybody. You know, you want your track to be a banger, but you also want everybody to enjoy your tune as much as you want. But what people don't realize is that's not how it should be. Rather, in my opinion, music should give reactions, right? Whether it's good or bad. If somebody says that your track is amazing, then that is a reaction. If somebody says that your track is trash, that is also a reaction. But you as an artist have achieved your goal of creating this cause, which then had this effect on somebody. And now they're feeling some type of way, whether it's good or bad. You as an artist have completed that cycle. That's all that matters. And that's all we do, right? Now, depending on how refined your skills are, you can really start to see that that's where all the other bigger artists that are big now are where they're at because of the amount of work that they put And so this gave me zero, zero reason, honestly, to even complain about not having my music play across the world or across the globe, charting, me getting festival um, slots or whatever shows that didn't even matter anymore because now the goal was how can I flood the market with something I enjoy? What's interesting is when people ask me now, what's what's your favorite artist right now? It's It sounds almost conceited, but I straight up tell them that it's my own music. And if you're a true artist, I don't think that that is something that would sound odd or weird because in the end, we know what we like and we try to create what's closest to what we imagine in our head or what we're feeling with emotions. And that translation process is so important. You know, and once you've actually learned how to properly translate that emotion into your DAW or your digital audio workstation, it is such an insane feeling. And when you can accept that, yes, the first year, uh, like maybe first 10 years will be filled with good and bad music, but understand every failure in your mind, every failure is a success because now you know what you don't like or now you know what you don't want to do. So that is that is the whole process of creating something that is unique, original, fresh, something that you enjoy, something that's wholesome. I mean, you, you just got to let go of what people expect from you. But for example, if you're like a dubstep artist, right? and you send somebody dubstep, they are, they're going to have something in their head already, right? They're going to have Skrillex's track or whatever, whatever dubstep artist that they love. 
they're going to envision that, but they're not envisioning what your track actually is about, right? And so that was the whole premise of starting the whole dark lo-fi glitch thing is, okay, yeah, if I don't have a home in lo-fi, if people don't think that my music is lo-fi enough, or it sounds a little bit different from lo-fi, how can I merge that with something else? And this took a lot of experience, a lot of production, because it took me creating multiple tracks in lo-fi to understand how lo-fi is and the confines that allow lo-fi to be lo-fi. Same thing with house music, for example. You know when you hear a four on the floor beat and a certain tempo, certain timbre, the kick, whatever it is, you know it's house music or dance music, right? There are certain guidelines that will create this genre. And so how can we create our own genre then? And that's how, I mean, just that thought process in itself, if you think about it, you take what works for one genre and then what works for another genre, and then you fuse those together. What's to say that you didn't create your own genre just now, right? If I created lo-fi music, for example, what defines lo-fi music? Hip hop is the first thing that comes to my mind. Um, Low fidelity, so something that's not too crispy on the high end, but still has something there. Uh, it has sample based, lots of chops. These are just a few things that really make up that genre, right? And that's just one side of it. Now imagine glitch music. So that's like hip hop is the first thing that comes to my mind. Really good top end, lots of clicky sounds, glitches, um, a lot of synthesizers that just sound out of place but are in place in time at the same time you know there's just different kinds of things that create that style of music and so when we take those two elements from two genres and then put them together you create something like lo-fi glitch right what makes dark music dark that's subjective right in my opinion, dark music can be a multitude of things, but primarily when I play music in minor key, it gives me like a darker, sad feeling, right? And so in my head, anything that's played in minor key with tones that are darker, uh, elongated, a lot of tension, understanding the silence in a track compared to the actual sound and the meat of the track, seeing the difference, and then somehow marrying the difference together, you are able to create something that's dark with lo-fi tendencies that have glitchy sounds, and that's what dark lo-fi glitch is. It's just like a bunch of random things put together from the best genres that I enjoy, and we created something that was fresh. But who's to say that that's something that's real nobody right but when you have the content to back your claim no one can say otherwise and i think that's the most powerful thing that people don't understand is if you want to get big in your lane how do you get big you're either really amazing at what you do and you know the right people or you put so much of it out that no one has anything bad to say or no one has anything that they can say against you to say that you don't put in that work and once you put in that work you'll realize that hey I can create any genre and once I saturate the market that is how I can create the wave because again ripples create waves and ripples come from droplets and if you are the one that's putting in the droplets putting in the work eventually it will ripple and when you have multiple droplets you know with your community growing your art growing, people listening to it more often, you start to create larger waves, which then start to take over other demographics. So it's never ending process, but it's always a journey. And the thing is, as long as you are in it for yourself, you are in it as far as what you want to create is all that matters and not what somebody else thinks. I think that you would be on a good path to creating this style of music or any style of music that you want. There are hundreds of genres out there. Find yours. Find the one that works for you. Grab it 
and run with it. Thank you guys for watching the first episode. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. So I'll see you guys on the next one. Please check out my YouTube channel. Drop a like, subscribe, comment, whatever you got to do. Ex Machina. Also check out my Spotify with all my newest music. DistantEther.com for all of your needs for Dark Lo-Fi Glitch, releases, merchandise, and everything else. All right, guys. Take it easy. See you on the next one. Mm-hmm.